Okay, just one little thing. Uh, I've, since I've added the um, the intakes and the nose, and they've been filled and filed, and we're leaving them to dry. Um, I might as well add the vertical fins because I'm going to have to deal with any joints along there. Um, some people would leave the fins off um, until after they've painted it. It's not a method I've ever liked because you still have joints to deal with. And uh, you know, they're, they're better dealt with while you're building the aeroplane than having to paint, add them, then deal with any joints. It's the same thing with. Um, to be blunt, F15 uh, vertical tails. Uh, people tend to leave them off until construction's finished, and then uh, and then add them after they've painted and varnished the model. That's fine, but the problem with that is um, certainly in the case of the F15, <coughs> the natural brake line of the tail, the vertical fin, doesn't match the brake line on the real aircraft. So you end up with a join that you either put up with and have that inaccuracy or you deal with it after painting and then have to do a repainting job. So for that I prefer with, with most of my uh, twin tail jets to get the tails on while I'm building the main thing. So as you've seen me before I'm just adding um, standard Umbral liquid poly to the joins to the um, mating surface and then leaving that tear for 30 or 40 seconds to soften the plastic before I add them. I really can't say enough good things about that join. <laughs> that's um, that's an exceptionally uh, nice join. I wonder if the other side is going to be the same. And the answer is pretty much yes, the join is just as good on that part of the uh, tail. I'm just checking the alignment there. And they look pretty much dead vertical to me, so what I'm going to do is just run a bead of glue along each side. <coughs> There's also some stabilising strakes to go in uh, on each side of the boom here. But I'm going to leave those off until I've dealt with um, the uh, intake tunnels, uh, probably tomorrow. So there you have it. There's, um, as you can see, the, the airframe is coming together. Got a fair old break now. Right, so I'm not far off um, now, uh, at the stage where I want to begin uh, painting, uh, starting to apply some paint at least, to my sea flanker. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to give it a coat of primer. Now there's been a, quite a bit of um, sanding work and uh, stuff like that done around the airframe um, as it stands at the moment. So what I want to do is just give it a quick, um, a quick clean. Um, and what I'm going to use for that is uh, some isopropanol, which is 99% uh, uh, alcohol. And uh, this will just remove all the uh, anything on the surface of the model that I don't want to be there. So it's just a case of using a bit of um, kitchen towel and uh, giving giving the entire model a good 
a good wipe over from stem to stern essentially. Now I know there's going to be a, a, some more uh, sort of remedial work to be done to this model in terms of filling and sanding, um, which is exactly why I'm applying the primer coat. So it's been given a brush off just to get rid of any um, any dust and sanding dust and stuff, and this is just a final little um, wipe over just to remove any existing grease or oils on the surface. Now if you're using something as powerful as um, uh, isopropanol, now whilst it's not a, a solvent that's going to attack your plastic, if you've got any areas that are painted um, it will remove the paint in record time. So if you, if you can see how quickly it's just removing that, that paint around the uh, cockpit combing there, it's just taking it straight off with one with one wipe across so um, it's powerful stuff and it's uh, you need to be a bit careful with it but it's not a, it's not a solvent like um, cellulose or whatever what you can see with this is I've masked off the uh, cockpit area and I've masked off the uh, the air intakes because they've already been sprayed um, uh, the required colors um, use a bit more now I've got the tail planes and uh, the canards um, I've, I've removed all the joined lines, added the fairings to the tail. Just give them a quick wipe over as well. Now the main, the, obviously, the main reason for priming is just to tell if there's any uh, areas that are going to need further work. But it also gives a good base for following coats of paint. Gives you a nice uniform finish to um, to work from uh, with the following with the following paint. Uh, using something like this alcohol it will um, evaporate really very very quickly, it's a, it's a matter of seconds. Okay, a word, um, a word on primers. Put the lid on that and get out of the way. There are many, many different kinds of primers. Some people just use a coat of um, a, a coat of the paint they're going to um, use for the main camouflage. You know, something like a, a, a Tamiya uh, paint. Um, uh, some people will use uh, things like um, Mr. Surfacer, which um, you know, there's some of the uh, Mr. Surfacer 500. Um, uh, there's there's a 1200. Quite often I'll I'll thin uh, Mr. Surfacer 1200 uh, with uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. This stuff here, and use that as a primer. Um, some people will even use things like um, Halford's plastic primers. Uh, I find them a bit coarse. I don't really like them, but a lot of people swear by them. I do have some in case I just uh, in case it's applicable for a job I'm doing. But generally speaking, I don't really like it um, for my models. And uh, the, my primer of choice is from a rattle can, and um, it's um, Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. Uh, Tamiya do a, a variety of different primers. They do um, a standard grey primer which dries very matte. Uh, they do a white fine primer which gives a, a kind of eggshell finish but goes down very, very finely indeed. Um, this um, is the stuff that. Um, I choose whenever I can these days for priming. It's the fine surface primer. Um, again, it dries. It's a pale grey. It dries to a uh, very fine eggshell finish. Um, a very tight, thin coat will go on. Now we've had this um, in here for a few minutes in some warm water. All that does is um, build the pressure up and lead to some better um, atomization when you spray. So let's give it a shake. Now what I'm going to do is just that that's that box there has got a, a few bits that I've already painted in it, so I just want that well out of the way before the spraying. 
Now because the pressure has been built up in the warm water um, it's going to lay down a lot of paint very quickly so the trick is to move very quickly. You can of course decant this um, into an airbrush um, and spray it through an airbrush. Uh, some people like to use something like you know a, a drinking straw into the nozzle there um, and then it can be decanted into a colour cup for spraying through an airbrush um, which, which does work, it's very good, it, it results in less waste and results in an even thinner coat if anything, but for most purposes the, the coat I'm going to get from this um, paint is, is absolute, from the spray can is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to move the, the main aircraft out of the way a second. I'm going to spray the tails and the canards first, so I just want to um, check. That really that is it. You've seen me, what was that, barely half a second each side there and that's been given a good coat of paint. Um, so there you go, one side, two sides, done. Honestly, that's how, that's how quick it is when you've um, built up the pressure a little bit. So, It will self-level in a very few seconds and uh, dry off equally quickly. So now we're going to move on to the main airframe. I'm just going to stick. I'm looking for something to uh, uh, hold the model by as I spray. And uh, generally speaking, I find a couple of paintbrushes will do the job very adequately. So there you go. So here we go. Then this is the main aircraft. I'm just going to give it a quick blast with the uh, Tamiya Fine Primer. And that is more or less it. I'm just checking over for any areas where I haven't quite got a coat of paint. Now I could spend um, hours going through all the health and safety stuff about um, <clears throat> you know using masks and all the rest of it. Uh, we're all adults here. I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs. You know um, what your limits are. You know. Um, you know, if you're a regular modeler, you should know the safety uh, precautions you should be taking. So I will leave that entirely up to you. I'm not going to mention them. And that is the model primed. Um, it really is that simple, and that is already drying to um, uh, an incredibly fine smooth finish um, to see if you can see that in the light so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that to uh, one side or actually not to one side because it's my main project at the moment so I'm just going to put it there to uh, dry out just going to check things like the tail planes again I've missed a, a tip of one of these tail planes so uh, There's that, so what I always do is uh, use a bit of lacquer thinner 
Sally Lopes here in the UK, lacker thinner to our American friends. And I just like to clean the nozzle off uh, before I uh, recap it. So there you go. That's to me as fine surface primer, um, and that's how um, I uh, I tend to prime a model like this these days. Um, you can see how quick it, uh, how quick and easy it was. Okay. And as you can see, areas that are dry, I can already. They're going to need a few minutes to um, to harden off, but I can already, um, you know. They're already dry enough to be able to touch them with um, with a finger. I've got some areas between the uh, engine tunnels here that are wet. Um, but overall, I have to say, as an initial check, just as this is drying off, I'm uh, I'm really quite happy with um, uh, with the results, and I don't think there's going to be a, a terrific amount of um, clean up required on this before um, before I go to uh, start applying the main colours. The main colours, I'm going to start by doing the natural metal areas on the rear of the aircraft and then we'll work on to the main camouflage colours. Uh, camouflage colours I've been looking into um, for quite some time, uh, doing some tests. And I'm doing one of the newer flanker schemes which is uh, essentially three shades of blue rather than having any grey in it, uh, by my references. And uh, having done a good search through all my um, all my stocks of paints, I'm going to be using Mr. Colour. Um, lacquers for this build. Uh, so the main colour is going to be Mr. Colour 74 which is actually Air Superiority Blue. Uh, that's a gloss colour and, um, and the best match for the grey I've found so far is um, Mr. Colour 337 which is um, 35237. It's the same grey you'll find on the top of things like, um, like Canadian Hornets and um, Australian Hornets. And for the anti-glare panels of things like um, Tomcats and, and things in the tactical paint scheme had a bit of 337 on them as well. And the final colour, the, I, I tried um, Mr. Colour do a couple of different um, intermediate blues. Uh, there's one there which is 366 which comes from a colour set. That's quite a grey colour, that's a great match for the World War II intermediate blue. Uh, but I, was, I, I did a, a check on some plastic and I, didn't, I thought it was a bit too grey. They do do another uh, intermediate blue, or one that advertises intermediate blue, and that's number 72 um, intermediate blue. That's a far, far bluer colour. Um, after doing a test, um, I decided that that was actually um, that actually looked like a much nearer uh, colour to the photographs I'm seeing than anything else. So that's going to be the base for the darker blue. So they're the three colours that um, I'm going to be using essentially for my uh, for my sea flanker. Um, so we'll be uh, starting to paint very shortly, um, so I'll see you then.